Hello everybody, this is Tony from Phono Stage Audio. This is about take three, because the dog keeps scratching, making choking noises, uh, looking like he's gonna be sick and then he isn't, and it's just a dog thing. So I've tried to encourage him to have a drink of water and settle down. Gibson, lie down. Come on, good boy. Lie down, lie down, lie down. Ooh. And I'm doing a fireside review today to talk to you about the Exposure 3510 integrated amplifier that was recently delivered by a nice chap to Phono Stage Audio as a demo item. Uh, and I was so enamored by the 3510 that I've brought it home to compare it against my own trusty favorite, the Musical Fidelity A3.5, which some of you might know. And, um, and I've tested this amplifier and listened to it and reviewed it against a number of different things, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I love this amplifier and I'm going to tell you why. But before I go any further, I'd just like to remind you to like us and subscribe to the video channel. Share it if you would, please, amongst your hi-fi buddies. I'm sure you've got some. Um, because it's very important to us to try and get this channel going. You know, um, I really, really, really enjoy doing this. I don't get much time for it. But um, I'd like you to send any messages, you know, or post any comments about any of the stuff that we do or anything that you might like to see. But, you know, less about that. And without any further ado, let's talk about this amplifier. So where do we start? I always ask myself that. Um, so I've come back here with the amp to uh, Phono Stage Towers uh, because I listened to this in the demo room. And I have listened to this with various amplifiers, some favorites and various pairs of speakers, but I really wanted to try it on a couple of trusty favorites, my benchmark home setup, uh, just to, to really know that what I thought I was listening to, I really was listening to. So um, what have we listened to this with? Hmm. I've compared it against the Graham Slee Proprius Monoblocks and Majestic preamp, which is a very nice setup. The Astin True AT2100, which is a solid monster of an integrated amp, weighs a ton, sounds very warm and smooth and lovable and a bit valve-like and I'm going to be doing another review of that. That's an amplifier worth reviewing, very interesting amplifier. The Exposure 2510, which I guess is the next one down the range from this. Uh, I've brought it home, you know, to the towers, compared it to the trusty Musical Fidelity A3.5, which, you know, is a few years old and probably isn't the last word in technology, but um, I know the sound of that amplifier. That is like a reference amplifier for me. If you can hear any heavy, heavy breathing, by the way, that is not me or my fans. That is the other elderly dog over there who just sits around panting a lot. So, um, and what have we tried? Speakers, the Graham Audio, uh, first and foremost, the LS6F, floor standing speaker, the wide ranging beauty that it is. The LS59F, the bigger, uh, much more substantial speaker that does take a little bit of uh, driving to get it right. I can't believe he's going to start choking in the corner now. That's dogs. Dogs, children. It says don't work with animals. Did you ever see that Blue Peter thing? Um, what else? Yeah, okay, right. So this, you can't see this, right? But the camera is stood on top of a Spender BC1. So I've tried it with the Spender BC1s, which to me are one of the sexiest speakers in the universe. I'm a huge fan. I've tried it with small speakers, a little pair of Darleys that we've got knocking around the place, uh, some bigger Darleys that I've got knocking around the place. So, and DAX sources, the Exposure XM CD, which is a lovely CD player. Uh, and I use the, the Majestic Graham Audio Majestic preamp DAC as a DAC. It's one of the finest DACs I've ever heard, really. Um, but ran that into, into the uh, 3510, sounded fantastic, but it's not really a true 100% reflection of the 3510 because you, you're using the DAC. The DAC is a preamp, 
So you're kind of getting half grain sleep, half exposure. So I went and grabbed my uh, topping E30 from home, which is clean as a whistle, plugged it into this, and then we're getting the full sort of DAC thing, stream some HD, Amazon HD into it. I'm not advertising here for uh, Jeff Music or anything like that. It's just telling you what we're listening to. Um, so I've got a pretty good idea of what this sounds like. And bringing it home to the home environment kind of finished it off really, kind of confirmed all my suspicions. So uh, where are we then? In a nutshell, right, this is a fantastic integrated amplifier. It's one of the best integrated amplifiers that I've heard. It is... For me, better to listen to than the Astin True. It's a markup, a certain markup on the Exposure 2510. The Astin True, yeah, it's a smooth sounding animal. You know, it's kind of um, powerful but smooth. And I think if you've got bright speakers or you want a kind of a slightly more mellow sound, uh, but you want that bass and you want to know that you've got some watts behind it, the Astin True is a fantastic thing. But dynamism, it doesn't have a lot of dynamics compared to this. This is dynamic. You know, the, the, the kick drums, you can hear the EQ on the kick drums. Does that make sense? If you've been in a studio or you've done a live gig where you're playing in a band with your, you know, your mates, the usual thing, and, um, you know, you're doing that, you know, one, two, 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 and he says kick drum, kick drum, and he's going boom, boom. Boom, for about 15 minutes at the beginning, far too long. And you can hear him tweaking the EQ on it. Or you're in the studio and you're trying to get it right. Then um, that is the sort of... I listened to it compared to the A3.2. And I listened to it again on this and back to the 3.2. And I was listening to Lazarus, which is a nicely produced song by Porcupine Tree. That's the other thing. I didn't tell you about the music I've been listening to, but certainly a lot of Porcupine Tree. Because I'm listening for dynamics and I'm listening for the ability of the, 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 the amplifier to identify and distinguish individual elements of the drums and the mix and whereabouts it places them. But the dynamics, if it's drums, it's got to come out a bit like a drum. You know, not like just a flat, still wide, but kind of a flat sound. Drums, you know, they come out, you know, they come out at you. So compared to the 3.2, the kick on that track, where it comes in after the intro, boom. It's not loud, Brit projects out that a little bit much more. It just comes out. So it sounds a little bit more realistic. And I found that a lot of sounds, even though I've loved that amp for years, a lot of sounds on this, with that kind of extra little dynamism, the ability for it to push all the little sounds out at you, can kind of envision them like little things pushing out. The ability of it to push all those little sounds out at you, just that, with that little bit of extra, like each one has a little bit of beef behind it, makes it sound more realistic. And it's very stereophonic. It's stereophonic even compared to the little monoblocks, the Graham Slee monoblocks. There's no huge... There's no huge difference in terms of the stereo separation. You know, the Graham sleeves, they are slightly more separated out, but they're not a weighty amplifier. This has a bit of weight to it. So the trade-off, certainly for kind of rock music and stuff like that, favours towards the integrated, which I don't usually say. So, um, so yeah, so dynamics, you know, it's got dynamics and the stereoness of it, Stereoness. This is a new word. Stereo ability. Now that's another new word. Uh, stereoism. It's another new word. There is a word out there, but you know what I'm trying to say, and that's the main thing. So that track Lazarus starts with a voice, you know, the kind of Stephen Wilson singing in the middle, slightly to the right of it, there's an acoustic guitar. Whatever amp you listen to it on changes how that sounds. Just that bit, okay? They can sound, the acoustic and the vocals can sound together, but wider, okay? And as the quality of the imaging improves, 
the vocal narrows down and occupies a space separate to the acoustic guitar, which is slightly to the right of it. it feels like it's down a bit. Now, I know it can't be, right? Yeah, we know this, but that's how it sounds. This amplifier, for an integrated amplifier, is extremely good at doing that. So, um, so yeah, I like it. I like it for its ability to give the drums to you. You know, give them to you. You don't just go and get them, it gives them to you. And I like it for its ability to really place things very well, particularly around the middle reaches. Although when I first heard it, you know, when I ran it in, I brought it home in the first place. I didn't do any critical listening, you know, so I was, it was running in and I thought, well, I can't run this in at home, um, at the unit, you know, where the, the demo unit, because I'm not there often enough to have just one amplifier on all the time. So I brought it home and I plugged it in, in the AV setup, so that, you know, when we're watching the Vicar of Dibley reruns, it's on, it's playing all the time. And we left it running, I left it running with a CD on repeat uh, for two days. And I think, I, and I left Ray of Light by Madonna on. But as soon as that came in, and this thing was cold out of the box, uh, as soon as I put that on and it was quiet, there was probably things going on. I think tea was cooking. There was a washing machine rumbling away in the background. But I was listening to the first track and she thought, just put it on, let's just have a quick listen. You know, put the first track on, not loud. And there's noises on that CD. William Orbit, you know, there's noises over in the far, very far left and the far right. Little pings and tings and synthy noises. And I could, even at quiet volume, I could feel it pulling, you know, it kind of pulls your head to one side. When you hear a noise that like is outside of the speaker, beyond the speaker, and I had a clue then of its stereoness and the fact that it was pushing that sound out at me, you know, it was, it was giving it to me, you know? So I was really, really pleased with it from the, on, from the outset. But, um, but I've took it, you know, I've run it in thoroughly, tried it with lots of different things. Um, what have we listened to? Oh yeah, what have we listened to? Lots of Porcupine Tree, because I'm interested in good production, I'm interested in dynamics, and I've turned into a bit of a fanboy of Gavin Harrison. If I was a drummer, I'd be doing one of those Tony Esketh reacts to Gavin Harrison, you know, but I'm not a drummer. So maybe I'll do Tony Esketh reacts to people reacting to Gavin Harrison. Um, but yeah, sounds flipping brilliant, doesn't it? We've listened to, again, the same old trusty steed. We've listened to some granddaddy. Uh, listened to Madonna again, but I'll listen to it in anger this time. That album, Ray of Light, that is a, that's a, it's a bloody good record. Um, come on, it's like going into a video store. Uh, you know, it's like you know, you go in and you suddenly like you don't know what it is that you want to watch, even though you've been planning for weeks and watching that one, watching that one, oh, I'm watching that one, and you go in and you're faced with all those videos in the video store, and you just like you just like, I don't know what I want to watch. Well, same thing applies really. I've got no idea what I've been listening to for three weeks. Um, but mental blockages aside, right, um, this is a new amplifier. It comes in above the 2510, replaces uh, another 3000 series amplifier. It's below the 5010, which of course is the master exposure, masterpiece thing. It's the pre and a pair of uh, 5010 monoblock power amps, uh, and he's a monster, it's a great thing, you know, so I'll be getting one of those in, by the way, if you're in the northwest and you want to, you want to listen to it, I believe there's one coming my way, uh, this sits somewhere in between the two, but it has what, you know, they, they describe it as trickle down technology from the 5010, from what I understand from talking to people and from my own listing, this leans more towards the 5010 than it does towards the 20. 5, 10, it is a bit of a leap, you know, so you're into big amp territory for not a massive amp and for not gigantic money. I'm not saying the cheap, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I think the fact that it 
to me at least, and I would uh, happily demonstrate this to any any people drifting by, it certainly does have the upper hand on the musical fidelity, and for me at least, on the Aston True. But I want to treat the Aston True, it's a bit apples and pears with the Aston True. So that could be much more somebody's cup of tea, you know. Uh, so I'd like to I'd like to independently review that and I will do. But it punches above its weight. It is heavy anyway. I mean, weirdly, it's heavy on one side only. So when you pick it up, it sort of sticks to the table. So I think it's got like a huge power, a huge transformer just sort of on one side. You know, I'd have put it in the middle so that when you're carrying it around with a bad back, it doesn't just pull on the worst bit. But there you go, it's deceptively heavy. Um, and I've got a bit of a walk through, you know, just coming up at the end where I sort of go for a little bit of a guided tour around it. Um, I wish you could listen to it on this video, but you can't. But you can ring us up, you know, you can come down for a demo. Uh, we've got plenty of exposure stuff on demo, a whole range. And um, I've done a lot of video reviews lately of Graham Slee things. Oh, sorry, Graham Audio things. Graham Slee still to come. Graham Audio speakers, because we had a, we had a load of them coming and we've got some more coming. But, but as I said to you in the last video, I'm separating it out into sort of chapters, into sections. We'll have a Graham Audio section over here, some Graham Slee stuff over here. And we've got lots of things from the exposure range, which uh, I got involved in because, I'm a, uh, because I particularly like them, you know. So this will be the first of the exposure chapter. Subscribe to us and there'll be more, you know. So subscribe, like and all the other stuff. Please do. Um, if you want to ask me any questions about this, put them in the comments underneath. You know, uh, I've been pretty good at answering questions. Sometimes there's a slight delay. Um, and I think that's it from me. I'm going to sort of switch you over to, you know, the Segway walkthrough thing, you know, which is very nice. And then, uh, so you can have a little look at it a little bit closer. <coughs>Let's have a look at this thing a little bit closer up. The exposure 2021-3510. More of a beast than the 2510. A bit less of a beast than the 5010. But this has 5010, what do you call it? Trickle down technology, really. It's got some leanings towards the bigger amps than the smaller amps, and it sounds like it. It's a pretty chunky sounding thing. It's powerful. Beautifully finished. I mean, it feels qualitative when you pick it up. But it does take you by surprise a little bit because it's very heavy at one side and not so heavy at the other side. The other side. So the, uh, the transformer, it's whopping transformer over this end. When you pick it up, one hand sticks to the table. And I'm going to try and get around the back without invading this video with fingers. There you go, let's have a look around the back and see what we're dealing with here. Okay, I hope you can see that everyone. Got an auxiliary phono in. Okay, so this is the optional phono in. You can have a optional phono or DAC board on order. Tuner CD, excellent feature here. We've got the AV input. I'm using this at the moment because I was just testing this using uh, another preamp. Well, the DAC in the preamp, so I'm coming into the AV input. But I've got another DAC which I'll be using later on to, to test this with, which is just a pure DAC, so I will be using the preamp of the 3510. Um, brilliantly, it has a tape in and out. It's got pre in and out. Okay, so lots of inputs and outputs. Plenty of stuff to go at. Um, two lots of speaker terminals. It's all very nicely done, very nicely put together. I love these, they're really high quality. You know, I like to see these on the back of, you know, equipment these days. Okay, so coming back round, da -da 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 -da, whizzing round here, and we've got the remote, if I can just find it. There you go, where is it? Here it is. Here's one I found earlier. So this is the remote. Okay, kind of pretty standard. Feels okay. It does a lot. So if you've got an exposure CD player, you can see I've got one down here on the floor. 
or any other kind of ancillary components you know it'll be uh, you can manage them all from one place which is good uh, right so that's it back to the big video I definitely recommend listening to one of these because um, to you it may look unassuming but the, this is a this is a lot of amplifier it's a lot of amplifier you know and I'm going to be listening to it an awful lot more so I just want to thank you for your time today uh, Look forward to the next video. What are we going to do? What's going to be next? I don't know. I don't know. I've got, I'm a bit spoiled for choice at the moment. People are giving me things. I've been lent some stuff. This great Temple Audio. Temple Audio, have you ever heard of those? And Mycetius. These are people who are relatively local manufacturers to us. And you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't sell these things. You know, they're not part of our dealership or uh, type of retail arrangements. These are things that I just flipping think are gorgeous. So... Um, I'll be talking about the Temple Audio. I'll be talking about my Setius, the wonderful Nick and his incredible my Setius speakers that we've got at the unit. I'll be talking about the Spender BC1s. I've just restored a pair and they're still, to me, one of the, one of the most beautiful speakers in the universe. So that's all from me and I will catch you next time. Thank you very much indeed. Bye. Bye.